What is something scary that has happened to you that you cannot explain rationally? Part 5. Sit back, relax, and soak it all in. If you like what you hear, hit subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your crew. Account 1. It happened around a year ago when I was visiting my grandparents. I was sleeping when I suddenly woke up. I wasn't wearing my glasses, but I was 100% sure someone stood in front of me. I immediately said hi like it was normal. I thought it was my grandma, even though that would be weird too. Then I realized it was in the middle of the night and no one was in my room. Really weird. I never told anyone about it. I'm familiar with sleep paralysis, but I could move. I stood up, put on some light, grabbed my glasses, no one was there. Edit. Also, another story from when I was younger, like seven, I think. I was randomly playing on my own in my room with Legos or something. Then, a weird orange-shaped thing sort of floated from my sister's room and went upstairs towards the attic. I, being a scared seven-year-old, ran downstairs. My mom believed me because she didn't think a seven-year-old could make up such a story. I went to school, told the story to some friends. Sometime later, I was playing in my room with a friend from school. Again, an orange-shaped thing floated from my sister's room to the attic. This time, I wasn't the only one who saw it. My friend did, too. We were both scared and once again ran downstairs. I never saw it again in the few years we lived in that house after the orange thing. My friend went to a different school. When I saw him a few years later, one of the first things he mentioned was, Do you still remember when we saw that orange thing in your house? Account 2. One summer when I was in university, I worked at the church office as the receptionist. On Fridays, I was often alone in the building and just answered the phone. One Friday, the music pastor was down in the sanctuary setting up for Sunday, and I was upstairs in the office. After about an hour of not seeing one another, I heard him screaming my name as if in distress. I ran downstairs expecting that he was seriously injured, but nobody was there. I searched all over the building and then the parking lot. His car was gone. I called him on his cell and he told me he had left about half an hour before I heard him screaming. It was pretty frightening. Make of those what you will. Account 3. A few years ago, I was going for a bike ride down by the beach. They had just made new trails that went pretty deep into the woods and connected to the next town over. So one day, I made my way down to the trails and started my bike ride. After a few minutes, I stopped to take a drink of water and noticed that the mosquitoes were out of control. I thought about turning around but decided since they didn't bother me while I was riding my bike, I'd be fine. I rode for another 30-ish minutes and came up to a sand pit where the path was supposed to be. It was by the beach, so lots of the paths had long stretches of sand that made it almost impossible to ride your bike through. But luckily, the sides of the path were matted down so I could ride my bike through on the side of the path. I started riding on the side and rounded the corner when I saw a woman further ahead of me pushing a stroller. I thought it was weird because we were so far out, and I almost never saw anyone, let alone a lady pushing a stroller. Plus, she wasn't even on the side of the path. She was trying to push the stroller right down the middle of the path in the sand. Pushing a stroller in the sand is hard as hell, and I could see her fighting with it to keep it going. So I thought it was weird but stayed on the side of the path and started getting closer to her, ready to pass. When I got probably like 100 feet away, she stopped and took one hand off the stroller and stretched it out to the side I was trying to pass on. I thought she was just making sure I didn't clip her or the stroller as I passed by. So I squeezed by her outstretched hand and kept going. I rode for a while more until I came to another sand pit. This one was way longer and you couldn't ride on the sides, so I decided I would just turn back. Account 4. When I was about 5'6", we were living in a rented house that seemed normal enough, but strange things started to happen shortly after we moved in. My older brother liked doing these huge 500-piece puzzles, and he would put them together on the floor of our bedroom. They started getting messed up during the night. Everyone naturally assumed it was me, but it wasn't. Not long after that began, I started to have really bad nightmares about a woman in her early 20s. She was in a white cotton nightgown with violet flowers on it had long, wavy, tangled black hair, and was swaying from the ceiling light. She would stare at me with a look of pure hatred. It got so bad that my parents took me to a therapist who said I was having night terrors. About a month after the night terrors started, we suddenly moved to another house. 
My parents claimed it was because they found a house closer to my dad's work. And just like that, the night terrors stopped and my brother's puzzles were left intact. It wasn't until 15 years later visiting the family that I found out the truth. My mother was talking to one of our neighbors about my night terrors, and she said that another family with a little girl rented the place a few years before us, and she had the exact same nightmares, right down to the nightgown with the pretty purple flowers. The neighbor also mentioned that no one seemed to stay in that house for more than a year. My mom thought that was too much of a coincidence. So she started asking around and found out from an older couple in the neighborhood that a young woman had killed herself in the house in the early 60s. My experience took place in the mid-80s. My mother went to the library and looked through the microfiche and found the news articles. It turns out that the girl in her early 20s had mental health issues and was being cared for by her parents. She had gone into that room in the middle of the night and hung herself from the ceiling light. I never got to see the picture they had of the girl in the paper, but my mom said she had long, wavy black hair. I'll never forget her eyes burning through me and her face distorted in silent rage. Account 5. I had just moved back to my hometown after attending an art school for two years. The only apartment I could find was a really run-down loft over a warehouse for $50 a month. This was in 1971, way before these kinds of apartments were cool. It was cheap even back then, and though I wondered a bit about that, it wasn't totally out of the norm. It did have tall windows and skylights, so it worked great for a studio. Since it was a loft, it was a big, wide open space with the bathroom being the only room. There were two other doors, one to the stairs down to the street and the fire escape door that had one of those fire alarms on it if you go out of it. The bathroom was like a box char cubicle with a shower, sink, and toilet. I had been living there about a month when one night I woke up and went to use the bathroom. The door had a small slide lock on it, and I always locked it out of habit. Just as I was about to leave, I heard heavy footsteps walk up to the bathroom door, and I watched in horror as the doorknob turned and rattled, shaking the whole door. It was the first time in my life where I was so scared that I actually felt my body go completely numb. I thought for sure that someone had gotten in, and now I was going to be raped and killed. The lock was a little wimpy thing a granny could have broken. The doorknob rattled several more times. Then something hit the door really hard. Then I heard the footsteps walk away and go down the steps. I heard the door to the street open and close, then silence. I think it took me nearly 30 minutes to get the courage to leave that little bathroom. When I finally did, I turned on every light in the place and went to inspect the door to the street. There were three locks on that door. Two of them could only be locked from the inside and those were locked. Nothing could have come in or gone out that way. I even checked the fire escape, but it was locked in a similar way. I couldn't sleep the rest of that night. As it turned out, that was the scariest thing to happen in that loft. After that, I would hear footsteps and doors open and close all the time and a few other not-so-scary things. That place convinced me and quite a few others that these things were real. I ended up living there for three years and would have stayed longer, but the place got sold and the new owners wanted to move into the loft themselves. They only lived there two months before moving out the cowards. Count six. I dreamed that a candle or something tipped over and lit me on fire. The fire began to cover my arm and back, so I rolled and eventually woke up really freaked out. I woke my wife up and told her about it, then went back to sleep. The next morning I got a phone call telling me that my father was in the hospital after his shirt caught fire and burned his arm and back quite badly. He was in a different time zone, so he was awake cooking when it happened, which was around the same time I dreamed of catching fire. Not so scary, but those are some long odds that my father would catch fire, and I would dream about it at the same time. Account 7. I was about 12 years old and staying at my grandparents' house after my aunt's wedding. The house itself wasn't very big, and was the same house that my mother and her brother's sisters lived in growing up. After the wedding reception was over, my mom wanted to take me back to my grandparents for the night so all of the adults could go out and get a couple more drinks. When we arrived at the house, my mother and I both could very faintly hear a baby crying with a woman trying to comfort the baby. Now, the house isn't very big, so you could hear pretty much any noise from any point in the house. Our initial thought was that someone forgot to turn off one of the TVs in the house, so we both walked around the house trying to find the TV that was left on. To our surprise, not a single TV or radio was left on, but the volume of the woman and the baby remained constant. It didn't matter which room we were in. 
Whether we were in the basement or on the landing, the volume of the lady and the baby was always the same. This, of course, scared the heck out of me as I never believed in ghosts before this happened, but there was no other explanation for it. Now, my mother was a little freaked out as well, but she had a bar to get to. She then just told me that it was nothing and got in her car and left me alone in the ghost house. I immediately turned the TV on with the volume set as high as possible without busting my eardrums. I was exhausted but drank pop to stay awake and not give this thing an opportunity to attack me. My parents showed up a couple of hours later to find a kid all wired on sugar just staring at the TV screen. I later told my aunt, who grew up in that house, the story, and she was ecstatic. She has always claimed that she heard a woman and a baby in that house growing up, but nobody believed her. Ever since that day, I believe that something like ghosts exists to some degree. It doesn't matter how much evidence or data people show me claiming ghosts don't exist, I know what I heard, and it gives me chills just thinking about it. At least mine was pretty nice and didn't break glass and other stuff like some of these stories. Account 8 I'm probably too late for this thread, but this just happened to me a couple of days ago, so here goes. My wife and I were backcountry camping in Redwoods National Park in California, and as we went to sleep in our tent, a heavy fog rolled in. I was sleeping soundly, but around 3 a.m., I woke suddenly with a sense that something was outside our tent. I heard the sound of light, muffled footsteps, and a quiet hissing or whispering sound, almost like something was muttering to itself. Assuming it was a bear or raccoon, I gently unzipped the rain fly of my tent and looked out. As soon as I opened the tent, the muttering sound ceased. The fog was so thick I could barely see more than 15 feet away. The moon and the night sky weren't visible at all. I turned on my headlamp to get a better look, and in the distance, I saw a faint light turn on as well. At first, I thought it might be another hiker, although we were about 15 miles out into the backcountry but it was a yellowish-orange flickering light only a couple of feet off the ground. I saw a silhouette of a humanoid shape that almost looked like it was beckoning to me. I grabbed my knife, got out of my sleeping bag, and walked into the night. As I approached the light, I could see the humanoid shape more and more clearly, but I started to get really unnerved. It didn't move. It didn't make any noise. Who or what would be out here at 3 a.m., 15 miles into the woods? I turned once to look back at my tent, and when I turned back the light was gone. The next morning we searched the area where I saw the light but didn't find any tracks. The thing that scared me the most is that right near where the light was, there was a 50-foot cliff leading into a stream below. TLDR, I was camping in the back country, saw a light floating in the woods at night. Turned out the light was right above a 50-foot ravine. Account 9. There are two stories I have that still give me shivers, both of which came from my grandma's house. I went to my grandma's place to help her move after the loss of my grandfather. Things were a little emotional. Either way, there was one night where I woke up with a pain in my chest. I woke up and waited for it to go away. It took like 30 minutes, but it did. Then I realized I really had to take a piss. Like really bad. I went and took my piss with no problem. Here's where the scary part hits. My grandma has a long hallway. Like if I had to guess, I would probably say it was about 40-50 yards of hallway. It always just made me feel uneasy. Well, this time when I walked down it, the hair on the back of my neck was standing up, and I felt like I was being watched. I turned the light on and felt a little better. I walked out of the bathroom after taking literally the most relieving piss of my life and walked back to the end of the hallway. I turned the light back off, and at the other end of the hallway, I saw a dark figure just standing there. It felt like it was just staring at me. I turned the light back on, and there was nothing there. I turned it back off and there it was again. I peed a little. I slept in my car the rest of the night. Time number two was recently. We didn't immediately sell the house after my grandma moved. We remodeled it to make it more modern. So I went by to check on the house and ended up staying the night. I went to go to sleep and did all the normal stuff. Turned the lights off, closed the door, etc. I started to hear tapping coming from the corner of the room. I turned the light back on and the tapping stopped. I repeated this process for like 20 minutes until I just got over it and ignored the tapping. Then I heard footsteps in the hallway and the sound of something dragging along the ground. Then about five minutes later I heard drums. I noped the fuck out of there and boarded the nope train to fuck that Urton and haven't gone back. I want to say we sold the house recently. Account 10. During my second year in college I was home one weekend visiting with the family and such. Well I went out with a friend from high school Saturday night. 
We went to a few fraternity parties, hit a few bars, you know, college town stuff. I got back home early in the morning, 3 a.m., maybe, and after coming inside, setting my keys and wallet on the table and locking the door back, I was walking through the living room to the stairs to go to bed when I heard my mom say my name behind me. Thinking it was my mom, I replied, yes, ma'am, and turned around to see just a dark, empty living room. It sounded so much like my mom that I actually replied to it. I told her about it the next morning and she looked genuinely freaked out. I just told her I was hearing things because I had a long night out, but I know what I heard. Account 11. I'm a naturally skeptical person, but I cannot rationally explain what both I and my friend witnessed. To this day, it bothers me that I'm not able to explain what we saw. The year was 2009. My best friend and I lived in a relatively small town. Not yet being 21, we didn't have a lot of things we could do to occupy our nights, so we settled on walking around the cemetery at midnight. It is important to note that neither of us had taken any drugs, medications, or alcohol prior to this encounter. My mom was very into ghost hunters at the time, so we decided to basically conduct an experiment. We start saying things like, if there is anyone here that would like to make contact with us, you can show yourself while walking through the place slowly. Once we started saying those things, the entire mood of the cemetery seemed to change somehow. The atmosphere became ominous and oppressive. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye on our right side, I start seeing what looks like someone dressed in white, running between tombstones, following us. We decide to check it out and wander off the paved path. We're standing off the beaten path about halfway into the cemetery, and I again repeat, is there someone or something here that wants to make contact with us? and wait for an answer. I really, really wish I hadn't said that. Both of us begin to hear footsteps crunching on the frozen grass in the darkness. The sound was coming towards us. Most people would nope out by now, but I decided I was getting to the bottom of this. The sounds got closer, and then it stepped into the light where we could see it. It was the disembodied figure of a person, the outline of which was somehow perfectly visible by moonlight and appeared to be darker than the night around it. We were able to make out the features of this thing, but it was also partially transparent. It shimmered as it moved, and it moved steadily towards us. By the time it got ten feet away, we began to hear whispering, like a long, drawn-out breath angrily being forced out of a person that is intent on doing you harm. We noped the fuck out of there and ran two miles back to the car. I still cannot rationally explain what I saw, but I know what I saw was real. I still remain skeptical, but I now refuse to go into a cemetery after dark. There are things there that don't like being woken up. Account 12. I had a terrible nightmare one night, two creatures pulling me down and taking me somewhere terrible. I woke up suddenly and realized I was screaming and probably woke the neighbors. Immediately, my boyfriend called me. I picked up and he started explaining a horrible nightmare he just had. Also, he just called to see if I'm well, since his dream felt very real. It was the same one I had, except he was watching me being pulled away by these two creatures. He lived at the other side of the town, so there was no way he could have heard me or anything. I have no idea how it is possible to dream the same things at the same time. Account 13. So my grand died a few years back. She had been really ill for a while and passed away in hospital with my dad, two aunts, uncle, her four kids, and my cousin around her bed. When the hospital staff were taking her away, my dad made sure all of my grand's personal effects were accounted for so that nothing was lost or left behind when they had to leave. He took off her rings, her necklace, and her wristwatch and gave them to one of my aunts. She put everything in her purse, but for whatever reason, she kept the wristwatch in her hand and just held it. Later, she realized that the watch had stopped working around the time of my grand's passing, give or take five minutes, which I guess gave the watch more meaning, even if it was just a coincidence. A few days passed, and my aunt never put the watch down. We were all waiting in my grand's house for her to be brought back from the morgue. She was lifted up the stairs in her coffin while we were all waiting in the living room and was placed in her bedroom right next to her bed. We all got our turn to go in and see her and pay our respects, etc., after I had come out, I saw my aunt sitting in the corner of the living room by herself. All of a sudden, the expression on her face changed from sad to shocked, but then she looked sort of comforted. She was looking at the wristwatch again, and it had started ticking. 
The hands had moved 20 minutes, the exact amount of time my gran had been in the house. This still gives me goosebumps to think back on. Account 14. Not really scary per se, but kind of spooky and unexplained. When I was in high school, I went to a friend's Halloween-themed birthday party since her birthday is in mid-October. At the time, she lived in a house in a very large, well-known housing development, one of the various incarnations of Levittown. The upstairs setup of this particular house meant that the stairs went up to the second floor and the bathroom was right in front of you, and to the immediate left and right were two fairly decent-sized bedrooms. The staircase descended into the living room. I was standing at the top of the stairs getting ready to go downstairs, and she was in her room with another friend to my right. There were about five people standing around the bottom of the staircase chatting and several more people in the living room. To my left was an unused bedroom that had some moving boxes and other junk in it because my friend and her dad had just moved in a few weeks prior to the party. As I went to go down the stairs, this transparent glowing shape, about the size of a pet cat or small dog, came floating from the bedroom to my left. It floated down the stairs rather quickly and floated into the center of the living room and vanished. The entire house went silent. You could hear a pin drop. About 15 people saw this thing, including myself and every single person standing at the bottom of the stairs and most of the people in the living room. I stared at the people below me and after a few moments asked, Did you guys see that? Everyone was wide-eyed and nodded yes. It was super weird. After doing a little reading on some theories surrounding ghosts and spirits, I tend to think that it was a ghost, not a spirit, as it seemed to be more of a residual image of some kind. My thought is that it was visible due to the increased energy in the house all the party guests. Who knows, really? That's the best explanation I could come up with. Account 15. My ex lived in an apartment that she was told was haunted. It was small, above a shop, on the Esplanade in Hervey Bay, Queensland. We didn't believe it was haunted, but weird things kept happening. On more than one occasion, I would be woken up in the middle of the night for no reason, and the front door would always be open. Every single time, there was something that looked like the shadow of a child standing upright in the doorway. I thought it was just me seeing this. But when I told my ex and her roommate about it, they went white. They'd been seeing things, too but not a shadow child. They saw a shadow man and sometimes a shadow cat. As we talked, we could feel the atmosphere of the apartment pressing in on us. We could feel something in the room with us. I thought it was a bunch of horse shit. I don't believe in ghosts or whatever, but the more we talked, the more scared we got. So my ex's roommate called up one of her spiritual friends who does cleansings regularly. He came into the apartment and instantly broke into a sweat. He told us something bad was going to happen now that we were aware of it. We did a cleansing and casting out ritual, and right at the very end, my ex's roommate's CD player switched on and played Bon Jovi's Bad Medicine at full volume. The CD player wasn't plugged in, and it didn't have any batteries in it. The only way we could get it to turn off was to take it across the road to the beach and dump it in the ocean. 